This is Canada Reads American Style, featuring two friends who love Canada Reads and Canadian literature. Welcome our host Rebecca from Michigan and Tara from Ontario. Hi everyone, it's Rebecca and Tara and I are here to do book chat number three, which is basically us talking about what we've read since the last time we chatted. So I'm going to let Tara go for, first of all, I should say, how are you doing today? I'm doing really well. Thank you. How about you, Rebecca? Good. Um, It's finally starting to a little bit of snow flurries. I'm a person who loves a lot of snow and I'm very yeah. bummed because we've only had the one big snow and that's it. So yeah. yeah, we're getting, we actually have a little bit of snow on the ground that fell overnight. I am not a big snow person. However, I do at this time of the year, like a little bit of snow on the ground because it's just prettier. So it's actually a really pretty day out there right now. Yeah, I like that too, because here it's just been really, it's kind of been rainy and ugly yeah. as heck. So I definitely yeah. need some snow. And and I'm somebody who actually does love to take the old, I have a little snow joe. I like to snow blow and I like mm -hmm. to shovel snow. So it's kind of crazy. Oh. But yeah. No, you're like my father. It's the same way. Love shoveling <laughs> snow. It was... <laughs> We'll do a little sidetrack here. So when we were younger, I grew up in Newfoundland and he would shovel snow in a t-shirt because he also always <gasps> runs really hot. And he would, he loved shoveling snow and he would be out there in a t-shirt, even if it was snowing, shoveling. It was crazy. Okay. Your dad and I would totally bond yeah. because I actually, I do wear... I mean, I would sometimes like wrap up in, you know, scarves and stuff. And then I'm just like, oh, I'm sweating. And so then I have to take everything off and just, but I'm not, in, not in a t-shirt, but wow, that's impressive. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so. Well, impressive. I'm not sure. <laughs> a little crazy maybe, but it's a little all crazy. good. <laughs> cool. <laughs> okay. Okay. Back to the books. Yes. Go ahead. Okay. I'll let you go first. And I'm excited to hear what you've read. So. Okay. So the first book I'm going to bring to our chat today is a memoir and it is one that was on my list for a while. I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings by mm. Maya Angelou. Yep. Yep. So this is an older book published in 69. Uh, were you going to say something? I feel like I interrupted you. No, not at all. But I, because you decided to read it, I, I added it to my list because, again, it's one of those classics that I hadn't read yeah. before. So, yeah. 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 I feel like now that especially that I'm really, I've realized how much I enjoy memoirs. This is really one that uh, was worthwhile to read. It almost like sets the bar for memoirs. Anyways, because it is, it's beautiful. She is a poet as well. And you can tell in her language, it's just beautiful language. Not, uh, I always find it weird that we always say that poetry uh, accessible or inaccessible, but it's, her, la her language is just beautiful, but that doesn't mean that it's not accessible to everyone Yeah, in her uh, memoir. So, like I said, published in 69, and it's only a short window of her life from about the ages of four to six until she's 15 years old. And oh. even when it ends, it ends at like what it has to be. I'm not going to say it, I'm, even though the book's what 50 years old I don't want to spoil it for anyone like a key life experience for her and mm -hmm. that's where it ends so I'm not obviously I'm going to read the next book <laughs> her next uh, memoir because I just want to keep knowing her story but yeah it's what struck me most is her language is beautiful but when she's telling the story of her six-year-old self you hear the voice of a child oh. and you don't question that this language is being used by like her. Do you know what I mean? Does that make yeah. sense? Like, so like her, the dialogue she uses isn't all huffity puffity or something. Well, just yeah. threw that off the top of my head, but it's, it's a, uh, it's just beautiful. It's amazing how she can use this language and yet you hear the voice of a child and the thoughts and feelings of a child. Wow. Yeah. Now, how many aren't, because I think you had said this before to me, but because there, how many sort of memoirs has she written? Or is there Good. more than two? I feel like there's more than two. If mm -hmm. you don't mind, I'll do, I should have looked this up beforehand. Sure. I'm going to do a quick search right now. Okay. And we will see. 
Oh, gee, I don't know. There's a lot. Because yeah. I just, I feel like you had said before, and I was surprised because I hate to say she's an author I have not read, and I just didn't know. So I'm really yeah. excited to kind of go down that path as well. Yeah. Well, when I put it in, it comes up as a book series. Oh, okay. Oh, my gosh. I'd say there's like seven. Wow. Okay, yeah, that I did from, not expect. Okay. From 69, 74, 76, 81, 86, 2002, and the last one is 2013. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So I wonder, is that primarily what she wrote then, were memoirs and poetry? Or are those her sort of two? Because seriously, I'm so like a dunce about her, and I shouldn't be, but yeah. Oh, no, I'm the same way as well. Like, I, I knew of this book as a memoir, but I think I first knew of her as a poet. And I don't know what else she's read. Like, I really, or written, I mean. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Was there something that prompted you to read her? I just think it's kind of interesting that all of a sudden she sort of popped up for you. Well, it, that book has been on my, I think... I can't remember a time. Obviously, I did not know of this book when I was a child, but it mm -hmm. feels like I've always known of this book and that title. Like, you know, it's always mm -hmm. just kind of been out there in the atmosphere. Yeah. And I was listening to a few months ago on another podcast, and they mentioned it. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, I have to read that. And so that, that's all it took. And I can't remember. Let me look to see the name of the podcast, too. It's a newer podcast. It's an Anna Green Gables podcast, actually. Oh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and it is hosted by two women, Americans. Oh, and it's called Eat Like a Heroine. They've only got a few episodes out, but. Okay, I'm writing that down because they, they talk about Anne of Green Gables. Yes. And, and, um, well, any of their heroines from, uh, like childhood heroines. So Anna Green Gables oh. is a big one. Uh, Little Women. That's it's, so cool. Uh, yes. And it's very food centric as well mm -hmm. when they talk about it. Like some, there's one episodes that they'll really like dive into the food of that book or a picnic or something. It's really fun. Well, I just have to jump in really quick. I know this is a yeah. little off topic, but I have to yeah, throw this no. in. I just finished the second book of Anne of Green Gables. And here's the thing. I do not know how it ends. I do not. So, and I do not want anyone to ever spoil it for me. No. Nope. Because I don't want to know. I mean, does she marry Gilbert? Does, I don't know what happens. I don't want to know because I want it to be completely fresh, 100%. So when I get through the whole series, but I just finished the second book. And when you said that about the food... Yeah, there's something just so beautiful when they talk about when they lay a table and there's all these and they she mentions yes. all the different kinds of foods and and I and I just sort of picture that. She's she's so evocative in her language in terms of describing, you know, the the fine details of their lives. I just think I love the I mean the series as everybody does. We all love it, yeah. but I am so glad you're enjoying it. Oh my gosh, yeah. Yeah. So, okay. Can I go now? Because I yes. have. Yes. Okay. Normally. Yeah. Normally I would not <laughs> spend time telling you about a book I didn't like, but I have to do it because it, I believe our, one of our most recent podcasts, I talked about how excited I was to read pa the Paul Newman autobiography, yes. which yes, is titled, <laughs> I know, The Extraordinary Life of an Ordinary Man, a memoir by Paul Newman. And as I said, really briefly, he, uh, a friend of his, the two of them sat down, they did these recordings of his life, and then they talked to their, his friends and colleagues, et cetera, and said, here, you know, tell, tell stories about me, but be a hundred percent honest, blah, blah, blah. So I thought, how fascinating would it be to have people in your life, like you tell something from your perspective, but then other people are telling mm -hmm. their side of it, which I thought was fascinating. Yeah. Okay. So as I said on my Instagram post, I am just devastated that I read the book because now, uh, and we do say that uh, this podcast is explicit in case every once in a while I'm, somebody needs to say something. So yeah. I'm going to say that Paul Newman was a dick. I'm sorry. I apologize <laughs> oh, for the language, no. but I've always loved Paul Newman. And now I'm just like, ugh, Paul Newman. Okay. So here's, here are the top three reasons why 
Okay. I did not I like feel the... like he hit it well. I'll be honest. He doesn't come across. Yeah. I think he really did because people, I think people really loved him. And I think he was able to trade on his gorgeous looks because let's face it, the, the man yeah. was his, those blue looking, eyes yeah. and the whole thing. Yeah. So here are the three reasons. Okay. One, interestingly, he was very, very critical of his mother, who he said when he was growing up constantly validated him for his looks. So he grew up knowing he was good looking because his mother, like sort of like in a kind of unnaturally creepy way, was mm. constantly reinforcing him for his good looks. Well, he was very hard on his mother and he was very, very critical of her. And yet his father, who was a secret alcoholic and who treated him poorly as well, he actually gave his dad a pass. So I'm mm. reading it going like, dude, <laughs> you're telling me all these bad things about your dad and these bad things about your mom, but then you are mean to your mom in your words and your dad. At one point he even says something like, well, I know if my dad had seen my success, he would have been there in my corner and he would have been supporting and blah, blah, blah. And I'm thinking, dude, what dad are you talking about? Because that is yeah. not the dad you described. Yeah. So I, that irritated me because I feel like in many cases, mothers get a very bad rap and dads get a pass, too. right? Yeah. Okay. That's number yeah. one. Number two, even though supposedly he was going to be very candid in this book, he absolutely glossed over the accidental death of his son to drugs and alcohol. So to me, I, and I thought, okay, well, I can see maybe it was just too painful to talk about. Mm -hmm. However, he then was in a competitive relationship with his son that was ridiculous. And I believe you know, of course you can't know because, you know, I don't know these people, but yeah, I felt so bad for his son and what he lived in the shadow of his dad, not because his dad was this famous actor, but because his dad was competitive with him in a way that he should not have been. And there was this example where they were driving a car and anyway, I won't go into the whole details. They, they had been drinking, I think. Anyway, they, they rolled the car, they had this accident and then his dad gave him like for Christmas the next year, a replica of the car all mangled and laughed oh. and thought that was really funny. Oh. And I thought, what, is, what, what? Like, that's not funny, dude. You guys yeah. could, I keep saying, dude, why am I saying that? I've never said dude before. Anyway. I think so, you're hanging it with me too much. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. But anyway, so it really bothered me. And then someone else told this, the, I think it was an aunt told the same story about seeing that gift of that mangled car because it, technically it was her car to begin with. Okay. And she was kind of horrified and did not think it was funny. And she said, Scott laughed, but she never, she always wondered like, you know, was there more to that story about what yeah. really happened? And he even said, told a friend of his, got told a friend of his that his dad pushed him to drive really faster and faster and faster. And they, they missed a curve and rolled the car and both of them could have died. Anyway, wow. I just thought, God, what a father. Anyway. Whatever. Yeah. That was number two. And then the last one is, this really irritated me because I did not know this because I don't, I don't really read celebrity bios all that often. But he, when he met Joanne, he was married and he cheated with Joanne for years. And then while he was saying stuff like, oh, my wife is just not that, I'm just not that into it anymore, blah, blah, mm. blah. I really love Joanne. He had a baby with his wife. Anyway, a second yeah. baby. So I was like, okay, I'm sorry. I, yeah. I just regret deeply that I read the book. So I will stop there because I've told you probably more than anybody else wants to know. Yeah. So, so now, and then the movie HUD, which is my favorite, you know, HUD, yeah. the character HUD is a mean, nasty guy. And I'm like, well, there you go. He was typecast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'll let you go next. <laughs> okay. I'm going to, my book, second book. Is completely different from yours. I'm going with Under the Whispering Door by T.J. Klune. <gasps> oh, I want to read this. Yeah. I know. Oh, my gosh. I loved this so much. So I borrowed this from my mom. I'd read his previous book. But I'm drawing a total blank now. Oh, The Cerulean. House in the... Yes, Cerulean in the Cerulean Sea. sea. Yeah. Yeah. And I loved it. This one I loved even more. So it is a story of death, life love and found family and it is just my cup of tea like it's a 
at the center of it. The characters, of course, are the center of it, and they are all amazing. They felt like friends. I even, by the end of it, I felt like I was reading a story about my family. Oh. There is a ghost dog in it. I love it. Oh, my God. I love the dog. The house is this wonky home with a tea shop in the main floor. I was just, I I, it, I loved this book so much. I, I also, oh, and the, I think the other reason, so that's the main reasons. The other thing is I've always had, and this is not make me special, since I was a kid, an issue with death, right? Like just mm -hmm. the whole, the concept of it, that someone, when someone dies, what happens to me when I die? Like just not cool with it. Yeah. And that, that is actually at the center of this book. And at the end of uh -huh. it, I was just like, you know what? I think I'm feeling, I'm still not great about it. I'm not, but yeah. I'm like, I feel a little better about death. <laughs> it's, you know, it's so, yeah. I love, I love that. That's fascinating. Yeah. Yeah, I think most people probably feel the same way. I'm, I am yeah. the same way. So I, I'm really looking forward to reading this because I like to have, I like to try to see death in different ways so that I'm mm -hmm. a little more comfortable with the concept, you know? Yes. <laughs> and uh, so I love that. Oh, that's cool to know. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah it's like Great. a warm hug by death. <sighs> Ugh, that's yeah. terrible, but yeah. Oh, I love yeah. that. Yep. Okay. My second one, and this one I, this was on a CBC books list somewhere that I'd come okay. across. It's Missed Connections, a memoir in letters never sent by Brian Francis. Yeah. And the reason the book sounded interesting to me is he, when he was uh, in college, he, and this was back in the day, he, because pre, you know, internet and everything, he yeah. put an ad in the local newspaper, which he, he really couldn't afford to do financially, but he did it anyway because he wanted to find the love of his life. And so I think he said he had about 28 responses and he was not fully out of the closet yet, but he was kind of starting to explore, like coming out a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And so this was a way to meet men. Cause he said, you know, the bar scene is one thing, but he really thought this might be another Avenue. Yeah. He ends up meeting some of them. He kind of glosses over. He meets some of them. They go for coffee, whatever, did not find the love of his life, but there were 13 letters that he never responded to. So in his 50s, early 50s, he responds to the letters. Now, he doesn't literally respond to the letters because some of these people, <laughs> because some of them are older, they they might be dead now, right? Yeah. But <laughs> but he writes a like each letter, he publishes each letter at the beginning of a chapter. And then he he ties into the letter into his life experience at that time. And it really is like he's telling a personal side of himself to the letter, to the letter writer. But you get to learn all about his life from the time he was young until he was in college and even a little bit about his life now. Hmm. And I thought it was masterful. Yeah. It was I just wanted there to be more letters. I want to hang out with him. I want to know him more. I think he, you know, to be able to look back at his life in that way, I just thought this was amazing nonfiction. Like, I just cannot speak highly en enough of this book. And what's odd is I don't, I went on um, Goodreads and, you know, checked hashtags, et cetera. And the book's not really out there and it's really too bad because I think it's, to me, it's one of the best reads I had yeah. uh, of 22. So I really loved it. And there was something about the idea when you're older and there are more years behind you than in front of you. And to be able to look back mm -hmm. and have that, to just articulate just that growth that he was going through. And, and especially because he was trying to come out and he eventually does while he's in college because he's living with a bunch of straight guys in a, in a house while he's in college. And he's afraid to even tell them eventually that he is gay because he thinks that he's going to lose them as friends. And that's all yeah. I'll say, but it's just, I, I highly recommend. So if you like 
nonfiction memoirs, please pick this book up. You, I guarantee you, you will love it. I, I can't imagine yeah. someone reading it and not enjoying it as much as I did. So yeah. What year was this published? Do you know? It was, I think last year. Yeah. It oh. was on a list. Yeah. It was on a list, I think for 22. And yeah. and that's why it's weird because it was on a CBC list, which is where I came across the yeah. book, but no one's talking about it. And I'm like, please. Uh, yeah, I anyway. haven't heard of it till you mentioned it. Yeah. It's now on my TBR. I'll be reading it because it sounds fascinating. But Yeah, I loved yeah. it. And in fact, I got it as a Christmas present and I, I, I cracked it right away. I was like, no, nah, I'm reading it right now. Yeah. Like this one. And I'm glad I did. And it was, like I said, I loved it. And I, and I guarantee you will love it. Yeah. 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 I think I will too. Okay. Next. Okay. My third book is a book of poetry. And I don't think this one will surprise you. It is uh, Jesse Thistle's latest book, so Scars and Stars. So it's a collection of poetry, however, also has essays in it. Mm -hmm. Um, It's beautiful. It's uh, at times difficult to read because he shares his life, well, from there's about homelessness, addiction, finding his way to his wife, Lucy, and their family with their new daughter, Rose. Um, He shares a lot. It is at times uncomfortable to read because he's being so open, but he's a beautiful writer. Um, The essays at times were all, it was almost heartbreaking with what he shared. And especially during his, um, periods of addiction I found those really difficult to imagine that he and others went and are going through this but yeah it's beautiful um and an extra little bonus that I didn't realize until I purchased the book is there are illustrations by Karen McBride the author of Crow Winter I believe yeah. is that the book mm-hmm. yeah and the, they're beautiful too the so it's a beautiful collection illustrations, poetry, and essays. It was lovely. Well, that's good to know because I did purchase the book, but I uh, have not read it yet. And I didn't realize it had essays in it. I just assumed it was all poetry. So that's good to know. At the beginning of each section, there's like an essay that kind of opens up the section. So it it brings a little more, I don't want to say depth to the poems, but you get more detail Mm -hmm. as an introduction to the poems of that section before you get really get into the poetry. So. Wow. Yeah. Well, that one, obviously I own that one. It's on my TBR. So I will be reading it. uh, I assume in the next month or two, I think. I think you'll enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely think so. Yeah. So, okay. My last one is, and I just realized that all three of my books are a nonfiction, which is, I guess, not a big surprise. (laughs) No, (laughs) but (laughs) anyway, uh, it's Ice Walker, A Polar Bear's mm. Journey Through the Fragile Arctic by James Raffin. And this, to me, is creative nonfiction at its best. Because James Raffin, I think he's probably about my age, so he's been around for a while. And he's spent a lot of time in Indigenous communities and really learning everything he can about the life cycle and the, and the importance of polar bears in, in the North. Well, obviously they only live in the North, but anyway, um, (laughs) he has written this book as if there is a, that he's following a mother and her two cubs. But of course it's just, they sort of stand in for all sort of polar bears and how they live and everything. And he takes her from the point at which she is a young bear to where she mates and then has two cubs and their life cycle and everything. And just, it, it just describes everything so beautifully. And I have to tell you, I cried like a baby during oh, the book. I'm not going to lie. I mean, I'm an I emotional. to read it. Yeah, I'm an emotional person anyway, but especially with animals, I can't yeah. handle it because I just feel they're so vulnerable. They, you know, we own all their space practically and mm-hmm. it's just so difficult. But anyway, it's absolutely beautiful. It's, and it's a tiny, it's actually kind of a short book. I think you can kind of read it in one sitting, to be honest, but it kind of will fit the size of your hand. It's a kind of a small book oh. in terms of the physical size of it. And I do, I think it's maybe it's like a hundred, I, I I'm just really spitballing here, but maybe yeah. 
135 pages or something. I can't really remember. Oh, okay. So it's not that long, but it follows, a, I think it's a year, at least a year in her life. And then the names that she, that he gave the um, bears is her name is the indigenous name for polar bear. And then I think her cubs are like first and second. So, Aww. and he doesn't anthropomorphize them, which is really important because I, yeah. that I couldn't have handled at all. I don't like that. Yeah. So highly recommend, you know, especially too, if you have, I would say young readers, it, it, something you could read together or something they could read on their own, but I highly recommend it. I just think it's, like I said, great creative nonfiction. Mm. Yeah. I'm looking forward to that one. Yeah. Wow, we read some great stuff we in the past. We did. We did. I know. Last I almost. Time. I want to talk, tell you about what I'm reading now, but I'm not. I'm going to save that for book chat number four. Yeah, same here. Because what yeah. I'm reading right now, I told you, holy baloney, yeah. yeah, amazing. So, okay. Well, I think that's it. And then I think what we're going to do is stop here, and then just not that anybody really cares about the process, but now we're going to talk. We're going in to talk about Canada Reads Long List. So stay yeah. tuned because we're going to put these podcasts up pretty much together. So we'll talk to you again soon. Happy reading. Thank you for joining us on our bookish journey. If you enjoyed this episode, please consider subscribing, rating, and reviewing Canada Reads American Style wherever you listen. You can connect with the podcast and Rebecca on Instagram at Canada Reads American Style and with Tara at On a Branch Reads. Until next time, keep reading. <laughs>